Hello, my name is Gabriel and I will present an uh, investigation on the structural behavior of stainless steel members uh, subjected to concentrated transverse loading. My co-author in this study is Professor Leroy Gardner. So I will start showing the load scenarios that were considered, then describe the experiments that were conducted, the finite element validation and parametric studies. Then I'm going to present the code-based design recommendations that were proposed another method based on uh, finite element design uh, and for the applications of this finite element base design method. So this work looked at I sections. So I section members subjected to uh, three different loading scenarios. So first one type A, when you have a concentrated load over one flange, and this is far away from the member end. Type B, when you have two concentrated loads apply on both flanges. And this again is far away from the member end. And when you have uh, a type C loading, when a concentrated load is applied close to the member end. Applications of concentrated load in structures are vast. For example, uh, bridge launching is a case of concentrated load. Uh, when you have a beam supporting overhead crane as well, and even a frame uh, supporting purlins. Currently, the error code 3 part 1.4 refers back to the error code 3 part 1.5 on the design of these members. So the error code 3 part 1.5 was based or was calibrated using data from uh, carbon steel uh, uh, member tests. However, it's well known that the stainless steel behaves somewhat different uh, from the carbon steel, uh, mainly in regards to the stress strain curves when you have uh, nonlinearity. Of, of its behavior before and after the 0.2% proof stress. So in total, 34 I-section member tests were conducted, members made of laser welded hot rolled austenitic stainless steel plates. Before the tests, geometric imperfections and dimensions of each single specimen were taken. This is the experimental setup for type A load, so a three-point bending test with rollers at the end that allows uh, free horizontal movement. This is the, the setup for type B loading, quite straightforward, and for type C loading, when you apply the load from on the top of the beam, three-point bending again, but the failure happens in one of the supports. So the tests were carried out for a range of cross-section sizes, bearing plate lengths, and member lengths. For type A loading tests, uh, the failure as expected occurs just beneath the concentrated loading at mid span. Uh, this is an example of outputs or load web shortening curves for different uh, lengths, beam lengths in this case. And the out of plane displacements were captured by uh, digital image correlation. You can clearly see here the whole out of plane, out of plane displacement field throughout the entire test, not only the peak load, but even beyond. For type B tests, uh, the, low, the failure happens more towards the mid height of the cross section, uh, as expected as well. So one thing that is important that validates the test is that the load web shortening curves uh, varies according to how uh, concentrated is the load. If the load is spread over a certain length, you get a value, but if you reduce this length, the load drops. And the out-of-plane displacement uh, also was measured using digital image relation, and you can see here the whole development of this out-of-plane displacement, which matches with what was observed before. So for type C loading, the failure happens at the member end in all cases. So we also investigated the position of the bearing plate on this end. So if you put uh, further in to the member, you have uh, an increase in the member resistance to concentrated load, but this increase is not uh, uh, forever. <laughs> so because this is a function of the yield length that you have developed in this area. So the digital image correlation show as well that the maximum displacement occurs uh, align with the bearing plate, uh, but very vertically. In some sections you have at uh, the maximum mid-height, in others 
uh, for the close to the bearing plate. So nonlinear finite element models were used to replicate the tests. So here you can see that the deformed shape of these models were well in agreement with the tests results, as well as the load web shortening curves for all the loading types. After that, parametric studies were carried out by varying uh, the steel grade, duplex and ferritic were considered as well, bearing plate lengths, span length, web cylindriness, and loading uh, scenario. So how stainless steel section members are currently designed uh, using the Eurocodes? So the Eurocode 3.1.4 refers to Eurocode 3.1.5 on that. And on that Eurocode, the resistance, uh, the design resistance is a function of the uh, reduction factor, the plastic collapse load, and a partial safety factor. So these reduction factors are a function of the slenderness, uh, which is a function of the, uh, the plastic collapse load and the uh, uh, elastic critical load as well. So the plastic collapse load is a function of LY, which is uh, uh, idealized yield length of the plastic mechanism. Uh, the web thickness and the yield strength of the web. And the critical elastic load is based on the elastic load of a plate, uh, which is a function of uh, the linear properties of material, uh, some geometric uh, properties, and also boundary conditions. So when we plot all the data from the tests and the finite element analysis in a graph, in a C lambda graph, we have something like that. And if you plot the Eurocode design rules as well, you can see that the data fits above the design rules. So it's under prediction. The code under predicts the resistance of these members, sometimes uh, for quite a, a bit. So this under prediction is usually associated with the inherent difference between the carbon steel and the stainless steel uh, uh, stress strain curve. So new design uh, rules for stainless steel members were then proposed. So these new rules are based on a column-like resistance function, which is a function of a F a alpha F naught and lambda bar F naught as a calibration factors. The plastic collapse load was updated. Some parameters of it was updated for, for example, the M1, the dependency of the, the rate between the yield strength of the flange, the yield strength of the web was removed. And M2 was adopted equals to zero for type A and B loading. And these are the alpha F0 and lambda bar F0 uh, as a function of the loading type and the material type. So these values were proposed for three different groups, for type A and type B loading for arsenitic and duplex stainless steel, uh, type A and B for ferritic stainless steel, and for type C uh, for all material uh, uh, types. Okay. So this new proposal uh, propose resulted in an average enhancement of about 10% for type A loading and 20% for type B loading. A reliability assessment of the proposed design equations were conducted according to the Annex D uh, of the Eurocode uh, 1990. So the data was divided in 12 groups and one for each stainless steel type and loading type, including type A cases with bending uh, uh, higher than the 50% of the bending resistance of the beam. So now we come to the advanced finite element based design approach. So commonly structural steel design uh, codes uses design methods that are based on two key reference loads, the plastic collapse load and the elastic critical load. So which from which you can obtain the member's slenderness and the member resistance. For example, if you're analyzing a column, so you will to use the squash load of a column and the Euler load of a column, for example. But when uh, the problem gets more complicated in terms of boundary conditions, failure modes, and loading conditions, uh, uh, simplified expression, analytical expressions are less straightforward. Hence, the, uh, the proposal of this method of using uh, numerical values to obtain the plastic collapse load and the elastic backing load. Okay? So this method is based on the, you know, on the previous method, but the only change is uh, uh, instead of using 
the expressions before to obtain the elastic collapse load and the elastic critical load, you would use the analysis uh, results from for a plastic collapse load, the results from a material nonlinear analysis. Material nonlinear analysis in this case so it's based on elastic, perfectly plastic material without consideration of second order effect. Okay? So if you plot the results of this analysis, you're going to get a curve like this. And if you use, uh, if you use the value that refers to the 1% of the initial tangent, uh, you obtain the plastic collapse load. So this was demonstrated in this paper. The elastic buckling load would be obtained via linear buckling analysis and then would be the critical buckling load. So using these two loads and recalibrating these expressions, we found new alpha F0 and lambda F0 values. So a lot of models were developed for curve calibration as shown here, which covers the entire uh, slenderness range. Uh, this consider also that now the slenderness is a function of the plastic collapse load obtained numerically and the elastic buckling load obtained numerically. And of course, you need to account for the final resistance to calibrate these loads, so geometrically materially nonlinear analysis were used as well. So overall, this method resulted on average enhancements of 17% in comparison to the new code-based uh, design proposal and up to 35% enhancement for type B uh, loading. So reliability uh, was again performed in groups of uh, in 12 different groups divided by load type and material type. And a summary is presented here. So what are further applications of this advanced FE design approach? So we can study known standard cases, for example, members with partial death web uh, stiffeners. So in this case, we have a web stiffener here and the other side as well, but this web stiffener doesn't run throughout the entire height of this member. So let's consider, for example, this case study, uh, considering type A loading only uh, of duplex stainless steel uh, with uh, the web stiffener height varying between 10% and 30% of the total height of the web and run these for different web slenderness. Obtain the plastic collapse load and obtain the linear buckling uh, uh, sorry, the elastic buckling load via the linear buckling analysis, uh, and then you create a curve like this. By looking to this curve, you can observe that the type A curve for duplex uh, stainless steel members without web stiffeners, which was plotted here, uh, can be considered a good choice uh, if you want to design such members. So to conclude, a comprehensive study was carried out involving 34 austenitic stainless steel member tests, more than 350 uh, finite element models for parametric studies, uh, simplified code based proposals improved over the current design rules, about 10% improvement for type A loading, up to 20% improvement for type B loading, and advanced finite element method was also proposed uh, and shows results improving from the simplified code-based. Preliminary studies indicate about 17% uh, overall improvement with 31% for type B loading, and also allows analysis of non-standard cases.